Oh, hello. This is Tak Chong from Walk with Tak. And welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And when I was growing up, I v e have a lady who worked for my parents. She cooked for us, but at the same time, she also took care of me. Her name is Jay. I spent a lot of time with her. In fact, my best childhood memory is the time that I spent uh, uh, when she took care of me, and because my parents uh, tend to be very busy and they are not around a lot. Uh, Jay is a fantastic cook, and in fact, most of my food memory uh, came from the food that she cooked for me. Uh, probably the number one dish that she cook I enjoy most uh, is baby cuttlefish, and she always cooked that. Uh, particularly when I came back home uh, with a good report card, and my parents always uh, would tell Jay, "Okay, now you can cook a baby cuttlefish for Tak." And so first, let me tell you a bit about cuttlefish. A cuttlefish belongs to a group of marine organisms known as mollusks, and it also includes squid, octopus, and nautilus. And my friend Cindy and her husband Jason. Uh, they had a salt water uh, fish tank, and they have a cuttlefish in their tank. And it's the first time I saw a real one. Uh, the general size of cuttlefish is somewhere between six to ten inches. Uh, there are some of them are smaller, but some are really quite large. Uh, one particular species, known as the giant cuttlefish, it can reach about twenty inches in length and weigh as much as twenty-three pounds. A cuttlefish has no skeletal structure except they have one piece of bone that known as cuttle bone, and in fact, it's more like a cartridge rather than as a bone. And this cuttle bone is very important in controlling the buoyancy of the cuttlefish. And you probably have uh, never been to a restaurant that serves cuttlefish, and uh, neither do I, except uh, when I have dim sum in Chinatown. They always offer cuttlefish uh, that are cooked in a curry sauce. So when I discovered that uh, you can buy frozen cuttlefish uh, in a Asian grocery store in Naperville, which is a suburb of Chicago, uh, I was very excited. And my wife told me that uh, she has um, never seen me so excited uh, about food uh, when I discovered the cuttlefish that I can purchase. So I bought a bunch of them. And I separate them into、uh, portions that for me to cook、uh, each time, because I'm going to try to cook them as many different ways as possible. And since my wife considers eating cuttlefish is pretty disgusting,、uh, so I decided I'm going to package it only for a、uh, one person only. In fact, I was very confident that I'm going to create some wonderful cuttlefish dish exactly how I like them,、uh, because with my fast cooking system,、uh, which is flavor chasing, advanced peppering, stir frying, and template based cooking,、uh, I can cook almost anything that I want. As my friend Jim once told me that once he adopted my fast cooking system, he feels there's no limitation of the type of dishes that he can cook. He do not see any cuisine boundary.、Uh, he do not see any limitation on the food ingredients. The only restriction is the type of food that he love and enjoy. And of course, in this case, my restriction、uh, is that my wife does not like cuttlefish. So、uh, this evening, I cook cuttlefish for me, and she had some chili that we cooked the other night, and so it turned out to be perfect. I'm going to cook this dish in my Cusina 14-inch stainless steel wok. I'm going to start out with about a two tablespoon of、uh, canola oil. And now you can use any cooking oil that you prefer. I just make sure that you use a cooking oil that is high in smoking point. And so let me tell you a bit about the strategy of how I cook this dish. I'm going to use a strategy which I call it protein first, vegetable second. Means that I'm going to sear the protein、uh, first before I add the vegetable to it. Now, in this strategy,、uh, the protein that you sear、uh, usually takes a little bit longer time to cook in comparison to the vegetables. So you have to choose vegetables that cook very quickly. And I will give you. Demonstration of how I make that selection.、Uh, the second thing you want to keep in mind、uh, is that when you use this method,、uh, the protein must be time 
perfectly in terms of how long it cooks uh, together with the vegetables. Because in this case, uh, you will avoid the protein from being overcooked. Now, this method uh, I use uh, in many other type of proteins. I will use it in shrimp. Uh, quite often, I will use it in fish. And uh, a lot of time, I use it in chicken as well. And of course, you can use beef and pork. So uh, I know you're probably not going to run out and get some cuttlefish and uh, stir fry it. But the method, the approach that I'm using here, uh, you will find it applicable to many other types of protein that you might plan to use. Uh, I'm going to season the wok uh, using my spot seasoning method. If you want to learn more about this method, you can take a look at this video. Uh, the idea is very, very simple. What I do is that I heat up the wok uh, until the oil uh, starts to smoke gently. And then I turn the heat down so the oil will not smoke out of control. Uh, you want it to be just a whisk of smoke. As long as you have a little bit of smoke, this will season the wok. Now, uh, this method is very efficient and uh, it allows you uh, to make sure that you have a non-stick cook surface every time when you start to cook. And this method also has another important advantage because when the oil is start to smoke even very gently, you know this is the highest temperature that the oil can reach and this is a perfect temperature for you to sear your food ingredients. After I thaw out the cuttlefish, I coat them uh, with one tablespoon of cornstarch uh, together with half teaspoon of uh, my basic seasoning mix. Now what I'm showing you here is real time of the cooking process. Now cooking cuttlefish and squid as well, uh, the window of uh, timing is really critical and the margin of error is very small because you can easily overcook them. I have learned from my cousin March the best way to prevent overcooking things like shrimp, uh, squid, or cuttlefish uh, is to cook them initially after you searing them. Uh, you add mushroom or other vegetables to it right away uh, because the other vegetable will buffer the temperature. So in this case, after I add the mushroom, I also add some romaine lettuce. Uh, this step turned out to be critical in avoiding the cuttlefish from being overcooked because the vegetables will buffer the temperature. And now the next ingredients I'm going to add uh, is some chives. Again, you notice the order that I'm adding these different food ingredients is based very much on how much I want to cook them. I add the food ingredients that I want to uh, cook the least uh, toward the end of the cooking process. And this is followed by the final ingredients I'm going to add to this dish it is some cherry tomatoes. Now, because uh, when I uh, coat the uh, cuttlefish uh, with the cornstarch and with my seasoning mix, I also add some garlic. And garlic has a tendency to burn to the bottom of the wok. So what I'm going to do now is to clean up this burn material by adding a very small amount of water uh, from my water squeeze bottle. As you notice that as soon as I add the water to the wok, they turn into steam almost immediately and I can use my wok spatula easily to scrape them off. And this will make cleaning much easier later on. At the same time, it returns the flavor uh, to the dish. After I did a quick taste test, I decided I'm going to add just a touch of oyster sauce. Uh, oyster sauce contains salt as well, uh, so it will make the dish a little bit more salty, and it also makes the dish more savory. And with a few quick stir, the dish is done, and the total cook time is only about 5 minutes. And because of the strategy that I use uh, by cooking the cuttlefish with the vegetable ingredients, I know that the cuttlefish is perfectly cooked to the texture that I want. And I hate to um, boast or brag, uh, this dish turned out to be just perfect. And I really enjoy it because the cuttlefish cooked to the exact texture I like. And the texture of a cuttlefish, just like shrimp, is really important. 
And I have four different kinds of vegetables. Mushroom, romaine lettuce, chives, and tomatoes. They contribute to the overall flavor of the dish. And so from the, this video, the point I want to make is that uh, using my fast cooking system, you literally can cook anything that you want. Uh, all you have to do is to understand a little bit of what you want to achieve in terms of the flavor and the texture. And then you use the basic template that you apply to similar food ingredients and use that uh, approach that will allow you to make modifications, to make adjustments, uh, to create the flavor and the texture that you are looking for. And speed is absolutely important in home cooking because since I know I can walk into the kitchen and have this dish on the table in 15 minutes, I am far more likely to cook and I am far more resistant uh, to the allure of fast and processed food. I know most people I talk to, uh, they prefer home cooking over fast and processed food any time. The big problem is that the time, the time that require to uh, cook a meal. But if you can take that away, and if you can cook a meal as fast as and fast and processed food, then it is far more likely for you to cook. Uh, I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine. Uh, if you would like to learn more about my fast cooking system, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.